Hi, my name is Ryan Languish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth in your journey as a game designer. And today I'm going to be continuing my series about prototyping in Tabletop Simulator and talking specifically on how to add token counters into your game that let you automate the values using a, some buttons around the token. So obviously if you were playing a game on a physical table, you games typically come with little counters or little tokens for things that you're going to, you know, maybe resources in the game that you're going to pay to a bank and get back and collect. But when you're playing in Tabletop Simulator, it's a little bit finicky to have to like move little tokens across the table and move them back and manage them that way. And you may have played some mods, maybe some of some well put together mods of different games where instead of doing that, it instead just had a little kind of picture of the token with little like plus one, minus one buttons that just showed a numerical value. So that instead of having to do all that, you can just, you know, change the value by clicking the buttons. Which is a nice thing that can just make your games play a little smoother in Tabletop Simulator um, and remove some of the kind of that unfun of fighting against the, the controls of table, Tabletop Simulator to do those things. So a lot of the existing mods that do this use a specific mod called the Universal Counter Tokens, I believe is the name, by um, Mr. Stump, which is a mod he put together to basically allow people to pull these types of counter tokens um, into into their games, which is a, is a great mod and hugely helpful for a lot of people. And I basically took that and I wanted to make it a little more accessible for people who don't want to get into the scripting or understanding how the scripting works, but may still want to customize the tokens a little bit to, to just be more to their liking or fit in their game a little better. So that's basically what I'm going to walk through in this video here is, is the workshop mod that I added um, that's kind of an extension of Mr. Stump's work on um, counter tokens, show you how you might use it, um, and even without any you know scripting experience, how you can get these into your game um, fairly easily. At least that was my goal with this. Now I am planning on doing a follow-up video at some point. That where I actually am going to walk through the code a little more. So for some of you that are maybe more interested in the scripting side and want to understand how these things work so that you can, you know, improve in your own ability to script within your games, I am going to do a video that specifically walks through that and explains it. But this video is aimed at just basically how would you pull it into your game and use it without having to understand what's happening under the hood. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to have to do, which I kind of already have done here because I have the mod locally, is you need to subscribe to the mod um, in the Steam Workshop, the Tabletop Simulator Workshop. So I've included the link in the description below to go to the Steam Workshop, and you should see a button that says subscribe on that page. And if you click that, that's going to add it to your subscriptions in Tabletop Simulator so that you can access loading that mod. Um, so if we go to games here... Assuming that you have subscribed to the mod, you should be able to go into your workshop and search for it um, and then click on it to load it into the game. In my case, I actually have it locally here because I was actually working on, on creating it. Um, so I'm going to load it here and it's called Luda Lodge Custom Counter Tokens. So if we load this, it's going to look something like this, at least at the time of filming. I may make updates to it or I'll probably add the URL to this video in here as well. Um, but it's got some instructions on the side, and then it's got a few examples of kind of tile, custom tiles and tokens made using um, this mod and this setup. And so if we zoom into one of these, um, like this one for example, I can just change the value of this by using the plus and minus buttons. Um, and this is just indicating like this is the, you know, the resource of the, or the thing that I'm actually changing the value for. But then you can see that you can kind of make some stylistic changes to it. So we can make the buttons blue. We can change where the buttons are. We can add minus five and plus five buttons. Currently, that's all it supports is to have the minus one, plus one, but either have the plus five, minus five, or don't have the plus five, minus five. Um, but for games, depending on how much you're using of a resource, that can be useful um, for changing it. Um, there's also the ability to define a minimum and a maximum. So like right now, this won't let me go below zero. But you'll notice that this guy over here um, is a negative number and lets it go negative. So if in your game it made sense for something to be able to go negative, that's something that you can define by defining that minimum and maximum. Um, this side is specifically tokens, which is going to allow you to do shapes that have a transparent cutout. Um, and th this is just, you know, showing some of the different things you could do. Like, you know, this right here is like not a practical 
solution of why you would want to do this, but I just wanted to show like you have the ability to change the text if you want to in some of these things. Now, what you're going to want to do, assuming your goal is to get these into your game and be able to change them, is you're going to want to right click on probably one of each, the tile one and the token one, and add it into your saved objects in Tabletop Simulator. So if I go here and right click this, we can go and we see the save object option, and I just want to click that. And I'm going to save it into my root folder with a name. And so I'm just going to say custom counter tile and save that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the token so that I have that option available as well. So I'll do custom uh, counter token and save that. Now I could have saved, you know, whichever one and you may want to get one that you like if you think you're going to kind of customize it the same way every time you use it, you might customize it here and then save that customize object so that that, you know, you can just pull it in and not have to make the changes. Um, but for purposes of right now, I'm just going to pull in, pull in these defaults. So then you would want to go into whatever your game is that you want to pull it into. So I'm just going to, oops, that is not the right button. Games, um, I'm just going to go into, let's go into this empty deck scripting tutorial. This is a previous video I did. <laughs> um, but I just want an, I, an empty workspace here. So if this was the game that I wanted to add in some custom counters, I can now go to objects and you'll see there's a saved objects section. And I see my two saved objects here. So these are things I can add into my game just like any other objects that I would add. So maybe I want a custom counter tile. I would pull that out here and it's just literally going to be a duplicate of what was there. It's actually locked by default to the table. If you want to unlock it, you can press L over it or you can right click um, to toggle lock on and off. Um, so I can move this around and it's, it's functional. But I would probably, and I imagine you would as well, want to use something besides the image of the Ludo Lodge icon. And so what you're going to do is you're going to right click it and go to custom. And you're just going to change what the top image is here. And technically you could change some other things if you wanted it to be a hex or a circle. Right now it's just rounding the quarters. Um, but I'm going to change this and I'm going to use just some graphics I had from other videos I did, specifically my Nandek videos. Um, I'm going to pull in this shield image. I'm just going to save it locally and I'm going to import that in. And so now I have, you know, a shield that uh, I can change the value of how many shields I have, whatever my shield value is. Now I might want this to be much smaller. It's kind of massive right now, right, compared to the deck. You can right click and go to scale to do up and down and that'll scale everything including the buttons. Or you can use the plus and minus keys um, when you're hovering over it. And so you would position this probably wherever you want, you know, by a player board. And then likely what you would want to do, oops, I guess I locked it again. That's what I was going to say, is once it's where you want it to be, you probably want to lock it. Because when you're playing the game, you're mostly just going to click the buttons and you're going, you know, you're not going to want this to actually move. Um, another piece of functionality with these that actually is, is something that Mr. Stump implemented in the original mod um, is say I want to set this to an exact value, I can actually right click and go to the description, you know, and say 456. And if I now click this button, it'll set it to that description and that actually clears the description then. So that's a quick little shortcut to set it to something. You'll notice that this button dynamically kind of changes the font size to uh, handle the bigger numbers, I think just up to four digits. Um, which is another thing that's customizable. And that's probably a good segue into talking about that. So there may be some things that you want to customize beyond just changing the image. Like you might want those minus five plus five buttons, or maybe you want them in different positions or the font size to be different or the color to be different, which is really kind of the goal of this, of this mod is to make that easy to do. The first thing you need to remember, and this is my reminder I remind in every single video I make, is that the change of bringing in this object is a change to our mod, just the objects and the components. And we need to go and actually save that. So I'm gonna go into games and I'm gonna overwrite my file here. So that now this is saved into the mod because to make the changes, we're gonna go into the scripting window and whenever you go into the scripting window and choose to save and play, like to apply your scripting changes, it's going to reload the last saved mod with those scripting changes. And so if we don't save it first, we're going to make changes and then it's going to reload before this object existed. We'll just be back to before it was there, 
which isn't what we want. But once we have this saved into the mod, we can now think about customizing it. So I am going to right click into this and go to scripting, scripting editor. Now, if you've never done any scripting or been in the scripting er editor, this may look very intimidating because, you know, it's a bunch of code that's basically defining how this is working. Um, apparently that doesn't want to let me scroll using that bar. Um, but you know, this is the code that's making this all work and, and that might be a little intimidating. But the goal of how I structured this is you shouldn't have to touch any of the actual real code internals of it to make the changes. Instead, I've defined along the whole top part here and anywhere you see this, this double dash, that's just a comment. It's just me putting uh, instructional things and reminders to try to make it easy to use. But any of these lines that have a value defined in all caps and then it has equals a number, that's something that's intended that you can tweak and change to whatever you want it to be. And so you'll see there's a bunch of those here going down, going down. These are all things you can tweak to your own use case. And then you're going to hit this point that says change code below at your own risk. And that's saying, hey, beyond this point is not intended that you change. Like this is what's actually making it working unless you really think you understand the scripting and you want to dig into that a little bit. But for those of you that don't want to think about scripting and just want to change it, you know, change the values, as long as you stay above this line and change some of these, you should be fine. So let's walk through a little bit what some of these are going to do. So the first one here is a minimum and maximum value. So that's just going to constrain what it will allow the number to go to. So right now, this is not letting it go negative and it'll let it go all the way up to 9,999. But I, for example, I mean, I could say I want it to go from zero to 10. You know, maybe in my game, 10 is the most you can ever have of this resource, no matter what. I would change this value to 10. I would hit save and play. And now if we come here, you actually notice it ch changed my value back. The, the saved value was bigger than 10. So now it constrained it to 10 and I can go down. But if I go up, it won't let me go past 10 or below zero. So that just lets you determine your bounds of what you want it to be. Um, the next option we've got here um, is the allow set from description. That's that functionality that lets you type a number directly in the description and then click the button of the value to immediately set it to that, kind of like a quick set. Um, by default, that's set to true. If you for some reason didn't want that functionality, honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't want that functionality, but if for some reason you didn't, you could just change this to false. Just change it to the word false and that would take out, you know, it won't do that anymore. The next one here lets us change our button colors. Um, and so it's going to let you change the background color of the button and then the font color of the button. Now these are values from zero to one. So it's a, it's a red, green, blue value, RGB, where this is your red value, then green value, blue value, and it's from zero to one. So here this would be zero would be no red, one would be as much red as possible. So in this case, one of everything is what's getting us white. Um, and this is just, you know, what I calculated to be the, the color for the branding of the Ludo Lodge blue. Now, if you wanted to get a very specific color, you, the easiest way to do it, honestly, is to go online to a little color picker that typically will show you the, the RGB value and it'll be numbers from zero to 255 for each of those three values. But that isn't the value you're going to want here because this is between zero and one. So the way you convert that, and I think, I, yeah, I put a little note here, you just have to divide by 255 so that, you know, if it actually was 255, it's going to divide by 255 to give you one. And it's going to give you anything in between zero and 255 is going to give you a decimal value. Um, so that's what I did here. I just found the color I wanted, then divided each by 255. And actually, if you really wanted to make it easy on yourself, um, you can take advantage of the fact that this is code and code can do math for you. So maybe I knew the RGB value was like 150, 250, 25. I don't know what color that is. But say I wanted to convert that into here. I could literally just divide by 255 here. Um, and that's going to do the math for me. I don't have to con get that value ahead of time. Um, so if we save and play, we should see... This is some other color. It's like a lime green thing going on, which makes sense because we mostly put the green value, right? Green was our highest, 250, where we don't have very much of the blue. So that's, that's what gave us that one. 
Um, and maybe, you know, I want that to be a bit against a black background. So instead of using ones, I'm gonna use zeros. Save and play. And we've got this cool looking thing. Um, which, which really, this is just to match the aesthetic of your game, right? Like your game, maybe this is some kind of like hacker programming game and your tokens look different. You want to kind of go for this green on black matrix command line look. Maybe that's what you want to go for. Um, so you can set those colors to whatever you, you feel like. Um, so that's that. Then we've got basically the parameters for each one of the buttons. So this is the value button, as in the button that's showing the current count. Um, and there's a bunch of different parameters we can adjust here. We can adjust the height of the button, the width of the button. We can change its position horizontally, and so that's going to be relative to the token. So right now, zero is saying it's centered um, on the token horizontally. Um, negative 1.55 for vertical is what's bumping it up above that. But say I wanted it below it, I could change this to a plus 1.55, save it, and look at that. We have this, you know, kind of ugly looking setup. But you can see how easy it is to kind of shift it around to where you want it to be. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, we have font size for each of the, like how big do you want the font size to be when it's just one digit versus two digits, three digits, four digits? Um, this would really be, if you really changed the width and the height of the button and you wanted the font to more better fill that space, you could tweak these to, to have different font sizes depending on how many digits are currently in the number. So that's all of that. And you kind of have those same options then for each of the buttons. So the plus one button, we could also change the width and height and the position, the font size. And then the other thing we can change for these ones is you could change the label. Plus one makes a lot of sense for a plus one button, but maybe you want to say add one or maybe you want to say gain a resource. I don't know. You have the option if you want to change the label. Um, you know, so if I just do plus one, save and play, it's going to look really bad because my button isn't big enough, right? <laughs> so it's exceeding the width of my button. Um, so you have that option for all of the buttons. So plus one parameters, you got the minus one parameters. Then for plus five and minus five, it has all the same ones, but it also has just a a value here that says, do you want the plus five or minus five? So currently these are false, which is why we don't have those values, but let's set them to true um, here. And I actually don't know where these values are gonna throw it, but let's see. Okay, throw it just kind of like right to the side of it. So yeah, that by just setting it to true, we now have our minus five plus five buttons. Um, and again, we're capped at 10, so it won't let me go past 10. Um, so again, that's, we defined that. <laughs> so all of that, it just depends on your use case. Um, and that's pretty much it. You've got, you've got those buttons that you can change. You got the color and the position and you know, I'm, I'm open to, if you have things that you feel like this isn't covering that you would want to be able to customize it without having to get into the code. Um, you could certainly leave a comment, um, and I can potentially see about getting that added in, but hopefully this gives a pretty good breadth of options to very easily get something to just look nice um, and work well in your game. And that's pretty much it. You know, we have the token version of it. So if I go to here and do the token, would basically be if I want to use something that's transparent. So loading here, this giant thing, unlock it. Um, and I would just go custom and let's just change it to, I think my potion one is transparent and import. It, I think it takes a little longer with the token because it has to like cut out the token. Yeah, so there we go. So now we have this, which is, you know, n not a full square like this. And I could change the size of it if I wanted to um, and do whatever I want and shift these guys around. And that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully this is something that is helpful. I don't know, you know, if you've seen this before in mods that you've played and kind of wished you could implement it in yours. Um, and like I said, this is really just an extension of the work that Mr. Stump already did. Um, and just trying to make it a little bit more accessible and easier, even if you don't want to get into the scripting at all. Um, like I said, if you have suggestions that you'd like to see added to this, um, I'll certainly consider them um, if I feel like it's worth the time uh, to put it in. 
Um, but if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like, consider subscribing for the channel for more tabletop simulator videos as well as just other videos aimed at game designers. Um, and I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video.